corsages appropriate for women with unbeautifully mottled throats and shoulders from what dress makes of us by dorothy quigley this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org reading by bologna times corsages appropriate for women with unbeautifully mottled throats and shoulders. Despite the traditional belief that a décolleté corsage is a tyrannous necessity of evening dress, a woman not graciously endowed with a beautifully mottled throat and shoulders may, with perfect propriety, conceal her infelicitous lines from the derisive gaze of a critical public. Women are indebted to that gentle genius, La Douce, for the suggestion that a veiled throat and bust may charmingly fulfill the requirements of evening dress, and also satisfy that sense of delicacy peculiar to some women who have not inherited from their great-great-grandmothers the certain knowledge that a low-necked gown is absolutely decorous. The woman who does not possess delicate personal charms commends herself to the beauty-loving by forbearing to expose her physical deficiencies. Unless it is because they are enslaved by custom, it is quite incomprehensible why some women will glaringly display gaunt proportions that signally lack the exquisite lines of firm and solid flesh. A throat like a ten-stringed instrument surmounting square shoulders that end in knobs that obtrude above unfilled hollows is an unpleasing vision that looms up conspicuously too often in opera box and drawing room the unattractive exhibition sixty one is a familiar sight in the social world how insufferably ugly such uncovered anatomy appears in the scenery of a rich and dainty music-room may be readily imagined by those who have been spared the unpleasing display it is so obvious that shoulders like these should always be covered that it seems superfluous to remark that this type should never wear any sleeve that falls below the shoulder-line the sleeve falling off the shoulder was invented for the classic contour set forth in number sixty two nor ribbons nor lace nor jewel are needed to enhance the perfect beauty of a fine slender white throat and the felicitous curves of sloping shoulders one whose individual endowments are as meagre as are those presented in number sixty one may improve her defects by adopting either style of corsage shown in sketches numbers sixty three and sixty four a woman's throat may lack a certain desirable roundness and her shoulders may recede in awkward lines and yet between these defective features the curves may have a not unpleasing daintiness and delicacy in modelling that can be advantageously revealed a modish velvet throat band such as shown by number sixty three is one of the most graceful conceits of fashion the too slim throat encircled by velvet or ornamented with a jewelled buckle or brooch is effectively framed the unsightly lines of the shoulders are covered and just enough individual robustness is disclosed to suggest with becoming propriety the conventional décolleté corsage. The Princess of Wales is as constant to her velvet or pearl neck band as to her especial style of coiffure. Her throat, in evening dress, never appears unadorned by one or the other of these beautiful bands that so cleverly conceal defects, and seem to bring out more richly the texture and coloring of handsome bare shoulders. Those who do not approve of the décolleté style of dress, or whose ungraceful proportions might well be entirely concealed, can wear with appropriateness and benefit 
the corsage shown in number sixty four this has much in its favor for a slender body the upper part of the waist may be of chiffon or crepe which is beautifully one might say benignly translucent it has an insinuating transparency that neither reveals nor conceals too much the neckband of velvet or satin full and soft apparently enlarges the throat the sleeves may be in whatever style in cut prevails this costume carries perfectly into effect the requirements of evening dress and may be worn with equal fitness to formal functions or to informal affairs a coat sleeve of lace crepe or chiffon be flounced at the wrist may be inserted under the short satin sleeves when the occasion does not require gloves the soft white setting of thin textures around the throat and shoulders clears the complexion and brings into relief the pretty delicate lines of a refined face it is plain to be seen that the unattractive specimen of femininity number sixty five with a long wrinkled neck and sharply lined face is unbecomingly costumed in the v-shaped basque and corsage which apparently elongate her natural lankness a charming and always fashionable yoke effect that she can wear to advantage is shown by number sixty six this style of corsage is equally effective for a too thin or a too muscular neck the filling is of tulle a square-cut corsage is most becoming to the woman whose narrow shoulders have a consumptive droop the angular cut apparently heightens the shoulders and decreases their too steeple-like inclination the round cut if it frames a full throat is also an effective style for sloping shoulders the v-shaped cut is most becoming to the short-necked woman whose aim should be to increase the length of her throat it is not only the too thin neck that needs to be clothed with discrimination throats and shoulders that are too robust are improved by being covered the arms and shoulders however are often the chief beauty of a fleshy woman and it is to her advantage to give them as effective a setting as possible as is obvious in number sixty seven the stout woman apparently increases her breadth by wearing a flamboyant corsage and she hides the most exquisite lines of her arm with her sleeves the princess style of gown in number sixty eight gives her apparent length of waist the modest lace flounce that falls in vertical folds decreases her formidable corsage the knotted twist of silk reveals the full beauty of her arm in dressing the throat there are a few rules to be remembered a too long stem-like neck may be apparently shortened by a standing ruff or a full soft band of velvet the tight plain band of velvet should never be worn by a woman with a very slim neck as is plainly discernible in sketch number sixty nine the plain military collar emphasizes the thinness of the slender woman's throat but the soft crushed fold of velvet apparently enlarges the pipe-like proportions of the thin woman's neck as may be seen in sketch number seventy the tight-fitting collar should not be worn by the corpulent woman with a thick neck as is shown by sketch number seventy one the thickness of the throat of the woman pictured in number seventy two may seem due to the folds of the velvet which gives a pleasing hint of a slender throat a delusion not to be despised by the woman burdened with flesh all the sisterhood stout thin long-throated or short should know the hour when the withering touch of age begins to shrink the soft round curves distinctive of the full sweet throat of healthful youth no regretful vanity should be allowed to glamour their eyes to the fact that time has them by the throat to put it melodramatically the wise woman will not please herself with a fatal delusion she will realize it is illusion she needs yards of it lace or velvet or any beautifying texture 
that will conceal the deadly lines of age. End of Corsages Appropriate for Women with Unbeautifully Mottled Throats and Shoulders by Dorothy Quigley <laughs>